Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. All right, I will get right to the point because as you can tell by the length of this video, this is going to be a ride. The first couple things I'll say in a non-spoilery context in case you stumbled into this, um, hi, so glad you're here. I hope you're okay. I hope you finished the book because this is basically my reaction vlog to the book. Um, I've already finished this vlog. I finished it out. So I'm doing this little bit of an intro here because I just dived right into everything. Um, I, this is full spoilers. I'm reacting to things as they happen. Um, as for in the beginning, it was kind of every like hundred pages, I do a check in and I recap what I've read and tell you what I'm feeling about it. Point out any connections I'm noticing to the other books. That that's something that I'm doing. And then near the end, I pop in a lot more because we're getting a lot of reveals. I ended up for doing this, having to make myself this crazy chart that had the names of every character and what they did. Cause it was just nuts. Um, and then I also had a list of a rolling death toll on one side and all of that. But anyway, this is your warning from me that this is a full spoiler blog. So if you are vlog, so if you watch this and you want to complain about that, I don't want to hear it. I wanted to do a spoiler vlog. I love doing them for this stuff because otherwise I don't have anyone else to talk to while I'm doing it because I don't want to spoil things for my friends. So I'm not going to bug them with it, but I was able to do it with the camera. So buckle up, grab a snack, grab something to drink or put me on while you're folding some laundry because we have quite the journey to go on together. And uh, yeah, enjoy my real time thoughts and some crazy hair throughout this vlog. So we'll see you at the end. Hi. Okay. So it's time for the first update. Um, if I did this right, we'll see. It's been a long time since I've vlogged for the main channel in this type of way. I mean, I know I put a vlog up at the beginning of the year, but it's been a while. It is super dark and overcast today, which like is going to be fine. It's the perfect day to be cozy and curled up with my book, but I did end up going to buy a second copy at Target because Walmart, for all of their promising or for saying that it shipped on Thursday, it didn't ship until yesterday and it's not supposed to get here until Wednesday or Thursday. Look at how freaking gorgeous she is. So there is a lot of chaos happening right now. I have to say I'm actually... Um, after I have my breakfast, I'm going to like write down the different groups of people and where they are. So I didn't do a reread and it's not necessarily that I'm like confused about where the story is at. There are just so many fucking characters, okay? I love 90% of them. So it's not like I'm mad they exist. It's just frustrating. Anyway. Um, and so I, it's mostly that I need to know like who's in each group of people because there's so much going on right now. Like just, there's a lot. So jumping like right into it, I'm only, I'm just starting chapter nine. Um, and we have kind of the groups of people we see the high. So now we have the POV of Lydia, by the way. So we have Lydia's POV. And she's got some stuff going on. She is still having to help. Like, she's having to help with the torture of Ruin and Hunt. And there's one other person, too. See, I don't even remember all, but they're the ones I care about. She went and got the last, the Sprite Queen. We meet the Sprite Queen in this. I can't remember if we saw her before or not. So it's totally fine if I miss that. I don't need anyone to correct me because I'll know by the end of this what's going on. But she went to get them, and then where I just stopped, she showed up where um, Therian, where Therian, Flynn, Mark, and like the Viper Queen are. Declan was there, and then um, Lydia just showed up, and she said, "If you open the door, the prince dies." So I don't know what she's planning there, but I know that she's trying to help in the way that she can. She's tried reaching out to Ruin and as day, she's like, night, night. And he is just feels completely betrayed, doesn't have any room to listen to. Obviously, she's a deep, deep undercover with this. You know, I'm not worried about her faithfulness. Like, I'm really not. Dude, I have that angled up so high. There we go. Um, so we have that. 
in um in <laughs> so weird to say this in Prithian we have Nesta who is in not Nesta we do have Nesta <laughs> we have Bryce who is you know of course not being fully trusted by uh the crew over there and she gets put in a holding cell basically they try to get info from her. They're like, why are you here? What's going on? And she, you know, isn't telling them everything because she doesn't trust Faye. She doesn't trust Faye. And they look so much like the Faye in her world that she's just like, I don't, I don't trust them. And by them putting her in a holding cell, that doesn't really help her want to tell them everything. Um, so they end up giving her like a translator. So that doesn't take that long. She ingests this thing that allows her to understand them. They end up bringing Nesta so she can like feel her out, but then like she leaves again. Like the dagger that Azrael had, like it is a pair with her sword or some sort. And so he has to like not take out his dagger because she's a she'd be able to control it, I guess. I don't know about this stuff, guys. I don't know why you come to watch Jen for the by the seats of this, but anyway, so that happened in one of the earliest chapters. Then she decides she needs to escape. She needs to find out how she can get help, what she's going to do. So she decides to literally like jump down into a pit that is the way, like, instead of wait for them to let her out, she's like, I'm going to go myself. So she jumps down and she sees a Midgardian, Mid, Midgardian worm. She runs into it just in time for Nesta to show up. And uh, they were able to tell that she had left the holding cell. And so Nesta goes after her. I'm pretty sure that Asriel is following behind because there's a part where Bryce says Nesta looked into the shadows and then looked back. So I'm pretty sure that this is why the Walmart one will have Azriel and Nesta chapters because I think Azriel and Nesta are both with her, but she only sees Nesta. So now Nesta and Bryce are traveling together. Um, I don't fully know what their like goal is right now, but Nesta's like, I'm just going to come with you because you can't just be here on your own. And Nesta is just so badass. Like I'm just fangirling over her so hard. I love her. So anyway, that was a chaotic update, but I figured I would just get a baseline going of just what I'm feeling for everything. Like we literally have like, we have the dragon still there. We have the Fendir air that's still there. We have a Sprite queen. We have the Viper queen. We have the Hind and Lydia and we have the men being torn. Like there are so many characters and now we've added another POV because we have Lydia. So I understand why people be overwhelmed with this series because it's like, again, I chose not to do the two rereads because I just didn't have the time and I was like, it'll be okay. And I know that after I read this, I will probably revisit the other ones in the time before we get another book. You know, that's the thing. Um, I'll want to reread them again, but that's kind of where we're at. So I'm going to get back into my audiobook, get back into this. I picked up some Chick-fil-A. I made myself a coffee. I'll have to talk about this again. I saw this recipe on YouTube actually using instant coffee to make a shaken espresso. It tastes so good. I did a brown sugar cinnamon shaken espresso. It tastes so good. That's going to be my new favorite thing. But anyway, I'm going to eat my breakfast. Um, and then, like, my plan is to listen all day. And uh, I have stuff to work on for my Etsy shop. I also have cross-stitching I could do. But, uh, and maybe a little bit of video planning. But I want to be able to focus and, like, I can focus on an audiobook and, and sew. But if I start trying to plan too much other stuff... I won't be able to. So the goal is, it is 8.30 a.m. The goal is to get through this all in one day, even though I'm already sad that I'll be done with it in a day. <laughs> but my goal is to get through it today. So I'll check in um, either when something crazy happens or I'll wait like another 100 pages to check in because I'm about 100 pages. In. Literally, I'm 100 pages in and that's all that it is. Like, what the hell? So, all right, we'll check in later. Oh, okay. I was like gonna wait until I got done with part one 
to do a check-in but okay so I split the book up those are the three parts so like I'm getting closer but I just had so much like info dump and I don't mean that in a bad way but I just mean like my brain is overwhelmed I need to process some of this with you right anyway so I am just getting to chapter 20. I'm at uh, page 204, so it is another 100. By the way, I grabbed out my uh, Bryson Hunt bookmark for this one, which is great. They've already said through love, anything is possible, like a couple of times. So like, okay, I did go ahead and start making a like character chart and stuff. And like, damn, did it just get more complicated? Okay, like I was talking with Jessen from Jessen Reads Romance, just in case you don't know. Um, she's reading this right now too. She's a little bit ahead of me, but I told her that I was starting to make this character chart. So like, I was splitting it up based by like who is with who and everything. And then like, there's another page where I'm like writing down the weapons that we're talking about. And I'm writing down people that are dead. Although there's people on the dead list that are coming back to life already. Like I had thought that Sabine was killed, but they're trying to bring Sabine back. And then the harpy, not dead, just found that out from Pollux. He just told Lydia and that'd be really bad because I believe, didn't Lydia kill the, I think Lydia is the one who killed the harpy if I'm not mistaken. But even if I'm not like, she knows that Lydia is a traitor, whether it was Lydia who killed her or not. The harpy and the harpy, we don't know the harpy's name. I looked that up because that's the other thing that I'm putting in here is it's like, cause Pollux, he's the hammer as a part of the, he was a part of the, uh, not the Isteri, um, he was a part of, what's her face, is the Sandriel's group or whatever. Um, and then, right, because Lydia is behind, Pollux is the hammer, Baxian is the hellhound, and so like I was writing all those names, but the harpy and the hawk, we don't have their um, first name currently anyway. And then, like, there's just, there's so many characters. So, okay. Not actually like a ton more has happened in Lunathian, but in Prithian with Bryce and Nesta and Azrael, that's where we're getting just the info dump. Like I'm mid info dump right now. And like I said, I just need to like process it. So, okay. Updates a little bit. So Hunt, Rune, and Argos, aka Baxian, aka Hellhound, aka was Danica's mate, right? So he's the other tr guy who was a traitor as well as Lydia. But I don't know if they both knew that about each other until everything went down, if I'm correct. Who knows? Don't take anything I say as gospel because I'm just trying to hold it together. Um, they're trying to figure a way out. You know, but Hunt is like, I was kept captive here for seven years. There's no way out. Well, last time he was kept captive, he wasn't with a uh, Faye and the Hellhound. So we'll see. But Ruin just asked Hunt to bite his hand off so that he could get loose from his chains on one side. Um, Argos said, I'll do it for you because my teeth are sharper. <laughs> so haven't seen the after effects of that, but he's going to bite it. We have Lydia. Lydia's trying to do her best. So Lydia is one of the new POVs we have. And I just love her being crippled with guilt. Like, I don't want her to feel guilty because she is trying to help. So it's not like, oh, I want her to suffer. But I like seeing the conflict in her and her playing like three different games, right? So she ended up getting um, Ithris, which is the Sprite Queen, which I think I mentioned in another clip. She ends up going to meet with Ethan and Therian in that group and asks them a favor or like tells them what's happening with them and then asks about Ithris because there are three sprites who are staying with them right there's Sasa, Mal Malena, and Rithi who are with um the dragon or Sigrid I don't know which one I think it's Ariadne who's the dragon um they came like with her, I think, when when they moved in with the guys. And Lydia asks the sprites about Ithris. 
um, and they're like, oh my gosh, you have, you know her, like, where is she? Now, um, she, Lydia made a deal with, um, like, she convinced them to give her Ithris for seven days to help use her in, like, the torturing of them. I think that's what she wants to use her for. But really, I think she's going to try to, like, free her eventually. Like, that's what I think she's going to do um, and get her on their side. Because, yeah, that's the Sprite Queen. And so, like, she hasn't been free, I believe, since the Rebellion. Because that's the thing, like, when you look in the front of this... You know, when it says the houses, it, there's always this little note that says the sprites were kicked out of their house as a result of participating in the fall and are now considered lowers, though many of them refuse to accept it, right? So that is um, when I assume she was taken captive because they participated in the fall or whatever. So there's that. So that's kind of what's happening with them. Um, Ethan now is just about to have to fight Sigrid, the Fendir heir, which is like, he should not do that, but the Viper Queen is forcing it, but she's making them fight. So that's about to happen. Okay, enough of me stumbling through that stuff. What's really important, okay? So Bryce and Nesta are stumbling through the underground tunnels. I was right. Asriel is following behind them. Bryce, like, it leads the worm after them by dripping her blood along the way because she wants the worm to attack so she can escape Nesta and Asriel. So she does and she like is going to leave them to die. And I was like, well, we can't have Bryce do that to our, to our babies. So she doesn't. She comes back. And so now they're traveling together again. So they make it to underneath the prison to the place where Nesta got the harp from. And so then Nesta brings up the, there's a point where Nesta has to use the mask. So Nesta uses the mask um, to defeat um, one of the creatures they come across. And then Azrael has to like talk her down and like get her to take the mask off, which was very difficult. So she used the mask. And then we get to the place where the harp was and there is this eight pointed star that like matches the star on Bryce. And so she starts asking a question and Nesta explains, well, there was the trove. Um, this is where the harp was. And she's like, well, what is the trove? And she's like, well, it was these three beings of power and I'm able to control them because I was also like created from the same stuff as, as they were. And so there was, she's like the mask, the harp and the crown. And that makes Bryce think, well, what if the horn was one of those as well? Which that was something that I had like briefly thought of when we did like the rereads of that. Just because, I mean, it's a toss up because it's like something's called like the mask. Like it could be the book. Does that mean they're connected? But it just seemed suspicious to me that in Silver Flames, there's these three objects that have this great power and then we have like the horn, which has great power to do what it does, right? So the horn is something that Bryce was like hiding when she got here because she didn't want them to know like what it can do. But now she explains. And so now we're getting this huge history happening. So there's this like, you know, infographic that pops up or whatever being the story is getting told to them by like the ghost of this being called Celine. And so it turns out Celine is one of the daughters of Thea and Finn. Finn was the first and only high king of the Fae, right? So, you know, Reese kicks around the idea of becoming the high king at one point, but like he's not there yet of going to do that. But Finn was the first and only high king that they had. So we're getting this backstory that Helena and Celine, and Celine's the one telling the story, but Helena and Celine were the daughters of Thea and Finn. Finn eventually passes away. He's already centuries older than his wife and he just starts to like fade. So he's gone. And then Thea, um, she, and this is where like, I'm not even going to pretend that I have like all of this down, but we have Thea and she ends up um, like she has power over those objects. She had all four of them, the horn, the mask, the harp, and the, the horn, the mask, the harp, and the crown. She had all of those. 
um, and she was in power. And there was to them what was called the Daglin which is the Asteri, okay? So they were called the Daglin. And they came and started like whispering sweet nothings in Thea's ear, basically, that there was another world that they could conquer that I guess had more power that they could get. I don't know why, but this is Midgard. Well, it turns out that the Daglin didn't only, um, and I guess um, Midgard was like all humans at that point, I think is how it was. But the Asteri hadn't just convinced people from you know, from Thea's world to come, but also from different worlds as well. So I believe if we continue this story, that will explain why there's so many different beings in Midgard, whereas like some of the other places don't. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm so confused by all of this, but where I think that this is going is that like Thea is going to get betrayed and her co-conspirator in this is Peleus. So Peleus was the first starborn prince. Um, and I guess also Aedas, the prince of hell, he was in love with um, Thea at one point. And we have briefly seen Aedas and Apollyon when they appear to the guys in the dungeon. We've just seen them for a little minute when they ask what happened to Bryce and they say Bryce was trying to come to you. She was trying to go to hell to ask for help. And they're like, well, she didn't show up here. And they have this little moment where they're like, do you think it's possible? And they're like, I don't know. And then they like leave again. So I think that Adis and Apollyon know that Bryce could have ended up where she is. Because if this story that um, Celine is telling that plays out like I think it does, you know, Adis and Peleus, who Peleus is gone, I believe so, from my research that I, my research as in going to the Crescent City Wiki is gone. Um, but I think that Apollyon and Adis know where, like, Prithian, I'm just saying Prithian, but like the world that they're on. There's so many names for stuff, you guys. Like, my brain hurts. And I'm sure I'm doing an awful job explaining this. But my point of even filming a clip, which this one is super long, is that, uh, is that we're seeing the connections between them slowly. And we're now, like, unraveling how these worlds could be connected before. Um... And it is getting mentioned, you know, Nesta says what the objects can do. Like she shares with her, like that the harp can stop time and that the, the mask has power over death. Like she's sharing that with her. So, and this was what I had guessed even before. Like I'm pretty sure with those four objects that you would basically have power over, you'd have power over space, time, death. And like you would have control over everything and be able to possibly create those doorways that we need. Because that's what Bryce is looking for right now is when she got dropped there, she got dropped on the lawn of Reese's house, basically. No, or was it the lawn of the house of the wherever? She got dropped on the lawn, basically. And she's trying to find a place where she'd be able to go, you know, to go back. But I don't know. I'm going to stop this clip. This probably made no sense. I just had to stop to process a little bit and show you all my pages of notes that I have. And the section that I'm at right now is literally adding more notes to what I'm doing. I was going to try to neaten these up so that I could send some screenshots to my friends, but it's just getting more complicated. So point being, we're a fourth of the way in. I'm 200 pages in. Out of Nope. I'm not going to look at the. That is how I got spoiled last time. It is 835 pages. So there we go. But anyway, my mind. Oh, did I show off my shirt too? I'm wearing my Crescent City University shirt for this. But so far, no sewing or, or cross-stitching has happened because I'm just sitting here riveted to the whole thing. So, okay, onward we go. Hey guys. Okay. That is very precarious. My tripod is, but we'll make it work. My hair is so crazy. Although I did get warm. I always get warm at my sewing machine. I don't understand why. It's not like I'm doing anything strenuous, but it always happens. Um, so we're another hundred pages in. And again, I was like, oh, well, let me get a little bit further. But holy shit, the amount of stuff 
that happen in the last hundred pages. Holy crap. Again, I'll probably do a horrible job summarizing this, so I'll just uh, have to point out the parts that I like the most. First off, I upgraded my uh, character map that I made and I moved it into my big notebook so I could do this. And I won't show you the whole thing of this. Uh, maybe someday I'll share it where it can be a secret. But what I did add is, because um, I had this one where it's like people that were dead before this book started. And now I've added a tally of like people that died during the book, <laughs> which sadly there's already, well, two of the people that died I don't give a shit about, but one of them, it was kind of sad. So, okay, where we last talked, Bryce, Nesta, and Cassian were in the caverns under there and they were listening to this like ghost vision of Celine, who is the daughter of Thea and Finn, who Finn was the first High King. Now, Peleus, he was her son-in-law because he was married to Helena and he was also her general, right? And I had also shared that the Asteri, which there are called the Daglan, they had kind of tricked them into like some of them going with them. They had tricked them into, they were stealing energy from them. But uh, from what I can gather, they caused a lot of people to die on their land because of what they did. They had to lock some people out, which makes Bryce pretty upset about all that. And so after they finished listening to all of this, um, Bryce and, or not Bryce, uh, Nesta and Cassian are very distrustful of Bryce in that moment. Um, let me find. Let me see if I can find it. But anyway, after they hear the whole story, um, they're not very happy with her and they want to take her back to have her talk with Reese. And she's like, yeah, you guys are going to keep me captive again. Like, that's not going to happen. She discovers that she's able to control both Truth Teller, which is Cassian, I'm sorry, Azrael's Dagger, and then Ataraxia. No. Yes. No. Gwyndia. Is it Gwyndia and that's the Star Sword instead? Ataraxia is Nesta's Blade. Gwyndian is Finn's sword that she had. Anyway, the so basically the two swords are both from the same thing. And there was that prophecy that said, when those two swords were connected, so shall their people be. Um, but the way things end up ending in this first part, I don't know how warm and fuzzy the Prithian Fae is going to feel about Bryce because she kind of fucks some stuff up. Okay. It's, it was crazy. So after they end up hearing this tale and everything, um, they discover that, um, there had been that there was a portal and where they're at is kind of where the portal is right now um which we'll get to in a second and they had closed it and Celine was left there to like be a guard over it or whatever and that's what like her ghost shared like she was kept there her ghost to kind of share about what had happened and so she shares that history um uh, and yeah, a bunch of people had died because of it. And let me see. Yeah, they're like, we need to tell Reese. And she's like, I'm not going with. Um, and then Nesta had figured out that Bryce is the horn. And you need both um, the power of that to be able to do it. So anyway, she's able to jump worlds. And Nesta's like, you're a monster just like them because you're able to leave. And Nesta's like, you're a liability. So Nesta is not trusting of her. And Nesta's like, you did come here to the place where the Daglin are still apparently dead set on returning. So Nesta, having rightly figured this out, is that Celine and Thale, like, they might have finally been able to banish the Asteri somewhere else, but they know how rich the power is where they are and they want to come back. And we will get into this again further on, but it seems like that is true, right? They want to get back to... I'm just going to keep saying Prithian because that's the easiest. There's so many multiple names for all of these. I think Dusk is the place that is where their world is. But anyway, um, they'll want to come back here. And so Nesta sees her as a liability because, because she is the horn. She's the one who can go between the two and create it. And so it's like, well, you are the key to like our destruction if 
the wrong person gets a hold of you, they can use you to go between the place, which is exactly right. That's what the Asteri want to use her for is to get there, which I don't want that to happen because that's where all our precious babies are at. So it's like, Nesta's not wrong, but Nesta being Nesta doesn't really play it cool. She's like, you're a liability. We need to take you back to Reese. And she's like, you're going to lock me up. So she's like, it's not going to happen. So she ends up, um, like Azriel is going to try to like capture her and she's like, ain't not today, bro. Ooh, that's the mailman just went by. And so she ends up like busting a hole. I won't go through everything, but like she's able to draw um, ataraxia to her as well. Like she takes power from it because um, she's able to soak it all up and everything. And she is like going to open the cells of the prison and this stuff. But anyway, she ends up like busting a hole and like falling down beneath. And so when she falls down underneath there, so yeah, so the sarcophagus, basically the whole point is, in the sarcophagus is one of the Asteri who got trapped there. And um, Thea, I believe it was Thea, was able to trap her in there and like basically put her to sleep and she was starving because she couldn't get more. So she's in this crystal sarcophagus. And um, Bryce being the foolish woman that she is like opens the sarcophagus so she can just pop right out and I'm just like bitch what are you doing here like this book this part one should be called Bryce goes to Prithian and fucks everything up right so we've just awakened in a starry in Prithian this is great where there's just a buffet of all of these fae who are still full powered who haven't been weakened through time the way the fae in um in Midgard have so like there's just a buffet of power all around her and if she starts to get her strength back she could literally start sucking them all dry like it's awful there's someone named Vesperus she's the Asteri and it's the evening star and she is acting like she'll just get to control all of it because she gets to be in charge and so they share a little bit of the information that you know, they're kind of slipping where she's like, oh, well, Rigelis was able to figure out how to suck more power out of people. She's very impressed that he figured out how to get their power without their consent because before people had to like consent to share it with them. And so there's just all this stuff. So anyway, what ends up happening is we do end up fighting her. Bryce is like making it worse in my opinion. And Nesta is finally able to um, hit her with ataraxia and she like chops her head off and like stab, 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 and she's dead. So they killed Vesperus, Hesperus, whatever. Um, but now they're like, we got to take you back to Reese because you are a liability. And Nesta even says, she's like, you're just as bad as them, which I'm like, hey now. So like, this is what I mean is like, there is like some hate between them now. Um, let me find like where she said this. Nesta's like, um, so we can kill them. So we know that. And Bryce is like, no, you've only left me with more questions. I need to find out more about her. And it's like, but if we would have left her alive, she would have found a way to start sucking energy. Like we don't like this. Um, and so um, Bryce promises on her mate's life that she won't tell anyone there about the specifics of what she saw or what she knows. And they're and like, um, Azrael's like, they'll pry it from you. People like me, like them, we always can get the information that we need. So he's like, you're not safe. And she's like, I won't let it come to that. And Azrael's like, please do it. And so she has Truth Teller and the Star Sword. So she's taken Azrael's blade. This is the thing. She's taken Azrael's blade that he's used for all this time. And then um, she now knows like she'll be able to to travel back using this like portal that's there so <clears throat> but as she's like going as she's leaving um she back towards the hole she'd made in the world in the universe she could only pray that it would lead her to Midgard now I have to say when she's about to jump through this hole I was a really hoping that she was like gonna wake up in like throne of glass <laughs> Because we know those places are connected, right? Like, um, what's her face? Uh, like, Aelin has seen the other places and so has, um, I think it's just Aelin who did. Aelin's seen the other places, right? So I was kind of hoping that part two would be like, oop, she dropped it on Aelin and Rowan or something. 
<laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't hope for that, but I was kind of hoping. I was kind of hoping because now that we know she can do this, like in my opinion, that's uh, that's on the table. Like that's absolutely on the table for her to be able to go there now that she does this. So that was the end of part one is her leaving as Nesta throws her silver flames at her. So she pops through this hole and then it said, and then the light from Nesta's silver flame winked out as the gate shut behind Bryce. Nothing but darkness surrounded her as she plunged deeper and deeper into the pit towards home. So Nesta was trying to take her out. So she left Prithian not on the best of terms. And now things are making sense to me in a certain aspect, okay? So I don't have my Walmart version yet, right? But my Walmart one is supposed to have POVs from Azrael and Nesta. And if she, if this is all the time she spent there, I think that's why there's only like some chapters from her. Because we barely see anything of Resan and Amarin. They're only really in like the prologue of, or not the prologue, but like the first chapter of this one. It's Nesta and Azrael that she's with the whole time. So we don't get oodles of, of look at anything else there. Bryce only sees in the house and then she's in a dungeon and then she is out of there. So it makes sense to me, like this didn't turn into a buddy cop situation with the people from Prithian, which I was like hoping that it would. Um, but I think there was enough stuff they get from Bryce that when we have the next book that takes place in the Akatar world, which should be the next book, the next book should be an Akatar book based on what I've heard, there's a lot of stuff that just got kicked up by Bryce being there. There's all this info they know. Now they could possibly, you know, from their point of view, they could possibly be having these beings come to kill them, you know? So they're going to need to, you know, shore up their defenses and be prepared. So, yeah. But I like, like, ne or Bryce definitely has some mad respect for Nesta. So, like, there's that. But Bryce did not leave on good terms. So that was a little sad. I'm a little sad that they weren't friends off the bat. And if she were to show up again, um, it's not going to be in friendly circumstances. Like, someone will probably try to capture her, like, right away. So that could be bad. Anyway, the other stuff that just happened then. So we then start part two, which is called The Search. And um, we have still the guys being tortured. So there was a scene earlier in this part that maybe I said this already, like uh, I did say this, Baxian bites off Ruin's hand so that he's able to like get one of his hands out of his shackle just as like they show up to torture them some more. And Hunt gets threatened that if he doesn't provide Rigelus with a piece of his lightning, because they want to use his lightning for something, which Sophie also had lightning, and that's something they wanted to take from her as well. So S S Sophie Renair, is that how I say her name? Renast? Sophie Renast, yeah, wrote her name down somewhere. Yeah, Sophie Renast had lightning power, I guess, apparently. Um, but they're able to take a piece. So he doesn't offer a piece and they threatened to kill one of the other two men. So they were going to kill either Baxian or Rune if he didn't do it. And he's like, I, I'm not going to, but then they take it anyway. So the next day they're going to kill one of them and I won't like, we'll keep going. But then also we have Lydia come by. I'm a loving the POVs from Lydia, by the way. I just, I love Lydia. I do. I like her a lot. And I like her even more in just a little bit because she's had such a dangerous job. She's had to deal with Pollux, like, molesting her all the time. She literally, like, forces herself to, like, get her period early or something so she doesn't have to fuck him right now because he just is a absolute horn dog sadist. It's disgusting. But she's trying to come up with a plan, right? And so she makes a deal with the sprite. Where's the sprite at? With Erythus, um, that she will give her her freedom if she helps her. So they take her, Lydia takes her to this hag who, this hag ends up freeing Erythus from the little like thing that she's in. And now she's free and she's like, I need you to help me with something. So that's just all we know about that. Then, um, she also needs the men to be like ready for an escape. So like their wings have been cut off of both, uh, Baxian and 
and Hunt have had their wings cut off. You know, Rune's missing a hand. Um, and she gives them, like, they don't even know that she did it, but she gives them shot of, of like, true of first light. She, like, gives them shots of it to help them, like, regenerate because she needs them to be able to fly soon. <laughs> so she's done all of this. And then... Um, we find out what happened with Bryce. So Bryce wakes up and she has fallen into her father's realm, which actually makes sense if you think about it, since he's, I mean, I don't know like where, like what portal she land or like where, but she wakes up in her father's realm. And so he has put the like shackles on her. She's not like tied with the chains, but he's put the, her power dampening things on and he knows that she wasn't on this plane like he knows that so he's questioning her and she's like i want to know where they are and he's like you have to tell me some stuff so he suspects she went to the other where the fae are from and so he wants to know and she's promised on her mate's life that she won't tell all the details but she has to give a little bit to get a little bit so she shares with him that yes she went there they're at full power. They're not Fae who have been sucked dry by the Asteri. They were able to kick the Asteri out all these years ago. You know, so she shares those little bits, which honestly is stuff he already knew. We discover that her father, who's very interested in light and how it works, and a lot of it has to do with, we think, him maybe trying to find a way where he could fight the Asteri somehow. Not fully confirmed, but possible. But he's keeping her captive. We find out she was gone for five days. Um, which means the timelines between the two places are very similar because that's about how long she was gone there. And But yeah, he's keeping her captive there. And partially also keeping her safe because if anyone else knows where she is, like immediately all forces are going to go to try to get her. So that's where Bryce is. She's, she's still stuck there with the Autumn King. And then we have the Great Escape, okay? So this was... All of Lydia's like things she's been setting up are coming to fruition. So she actually let um, Erythus burn her to make it look like that's how she escaped. So the dregs of Orpheon or Ophion, Ophion, right, is the rebels that um, Cormac and Lydia and Rune like worked with, right? And they've been pretty decimated since Rune got kidnapped and. Um, you know, they lost court, like they lost so many people, but, and, but they still have some agents in play. So Lydia busts them out of prison by, um, she had like a vehicle ready. And so they get out of there. And at the same time that they're escaping, Erythus blows up this one place. Like she uses her firepower, like blow something up at the same time that Ophion hits like all these different cities at the same time, um, they do distractions. So they're able to make it out of the city, right? Because Lunathian has um, the huge gate all around it. Let's go to the map here. It has this, this is a, a wall all around Lunathian. And so they're able to get out, um, but also the, um, they have people coming after them too. So they need to try to make it to the ocean so they can get to the submarine that's out there where they're safe. So I had to pop on to talk about it cause it was just so thrilling. Like it was just so good. They escaped and yeah. So now I'm feeling a little better. There is also another sad thing that happened. So Ethan was forced to fight Sigrid in the Viper Queen's fights. Now, I don't understand why the Viper Queen wanted this to happen. I don't know. But Ethan kills Sigrid on accident, but he like basically tears her head off on accident. Um, Sigrid, of course, being the Fendir heir that they had found, and now she's dead. She's dead as far as we know. Um, so yeah, it's awful. It's, it's awful what happened to her. So that's sad. Um, and Ethan, he has the chance to escape and go with the rest of the crew to the Ophion. Um, like they have a chance to go get with them. But Ethan, he feels so much guilt for what happened that he goes to the house of flame and shadow where Jessica is and he's just got there. I don't know what he's doing there. What's going to happen, but he showed up there just now. So, okay. I need to get back into it. 
working on my sewing projects finally. But yeah, we're now 300 out of 800 done. <laughs> but I mean, this video is going to be so fucking long. But anyway. Hey, hi. It's now five o'clock and uh, I officially like just passed the halfway point. <laughs> Jeez, I still have seven hours left of the audiobook, and that's at the 1.9 speed. Just wanted to say. Um, so yeah, okay, where did I leave it at? We were just after part two, and um, okay, so Ethan had killed Sigrid accidentally, and they all go to escape um, from the Viper Queen. And they're going to go get aboard the, uh, what's it called? But the submarine that's in the ocean. And Ethan ends up going to Jessica. I think I might have mentioned this in the House of Flame and Shadow. And we find out some of the history of Jessica. That she actually is human who had been cursed to stay human forever until she reveals some certain information to uh, I can't remember who it was now but she was actually a priestess who protected the libraries like you know pretty much every one of Sarah J Mass's worlds has this library that is like lost or there's pieces of it in different places right and I I mean, besides being a sucker for a cool library, like, I just think that's really interesting. And so, Jessica, she is actually very old. And she's second in command after the Umber King, or the Under King, Umber King, whatever it is, in House of Flame and Shadow. Um, and that is where Ethan is hanging out. And he wants Jessica's help reviving Sigrid. Because there are necromancers in this world. The House of Flame and Shadow has necromancers, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they have the Daemonikai, Reapers, Wraiths, vamp Vampires, Draki, Dragons, Necromancers, and many wicked and unnamed things that even Erd herself cannot see is what's in the House of Flame and Shadow. So... He is asked and Jessica's like, hey, you got to do some work for me before I'll help you with that. Um, eventually, I'm just going to tell you his what I've all read in his part first. So he has to work for her for a couple days. She has went ahead and paid for the body of Sigrid, both her body and her head to be brought and like kept on ice, basically, because basically as long as the soul hasn't like crossed yet, which you'll know if you had the previous ones, like someone has to like pay for your soul to cross or whatever and uh she hadn't done that yet and so they can bring her back so the necromancer that ends up showing up is actually hypaxia who was the witch queen <clears throat> but she ain't the witch queen no more because she got complacent and I really liked what Jessica said about this, even though it's kind of harsh, is that Hypaxia knew that some of her, like, people were rallying against her, right? Because they, like, vote for who's the strongest. And so she got deposed, which, like, is fine. But then the new, like, head witch ordered her execution instead of just letting her, like, you don't have to kill the person you depose. But they didn't want her to be a threat anymore. So Hypaxia has now come and she um, swears herself to the House of Flame and Shadow. So she works on um, raising Sigrid from the dead. Well, when she raises her, the Umber King had stepped in like the cunt that he is and offered Sigrid a different way. So she comes back as a, um, as a, what did I just say that they were? As a reaper. And she's not herself then. So this is awful. You know, Ethan's made it even worse. He just can't get a break. 
and they're like, what, this is awful. Now there's a Fendir who's a Reaper. Um, and the Umber King's just like, hey, I am the King of the Dead. I get to decide this shit if I want to or not, right? Well, Hypaxia says there actually might be a way to call her back because um, necromancers can reunite them with their body. They also can like send them away and everything. So she's like, we could try to bring her back and offer her a choice again and have her choose the right choice. And they're like, well, how do we do that? We need the help of a, uh, is it a phoenix or... I can't remember, but whatever Sophie Renast was, I think she was a phoenix. Was she a phoenix? Or firebird. Firebird. Um, and they're like, well, she's dead. And they're like, but we could still use the body for that. Which was funny because they mentioned her body earlier when, um, when Regulus, see, I'm glad I have all these names, when Regulus wanted some of Hunt's lightning, um, they said, like, that's what they wanted her body for. And so Jessaba is like, okay, well, let's hunt down her body. And it seems that it, it might be in a Valen. I, I can't recall where she said the body was. Yes, it is on a Valen. So that's interesting because that's where all of our peeps are at. So let me explain now where the, I'm losing the light now. Um, that's where everybody else ended up too. So I think that's where we're going to run into each other finally and connect another group, right? Because we've connected a few of the groups together, but I need to explain how Bryce gets to our people. Okay. So after we had the escape, Lydia helped them get away. We almost lost Lydia. Um, I mean, and we did actually, she died, but she led them away so that our guys could get away. And she jumped off a cliff to get away from the, uh, not the hellhound, that's it, the dreadwolf, Mordok, um, and, uh, Therion swam over and got her and brought her back. And she had, was just like obliterated basically. They were able to get her, they gave her a bunch of like first light that they had saved up. Hunt had to restart her heart multiple times with his lightning, but we got her back. So she's there. Um, then while we're like waiting for her to heal, we have Bryce, right, who is trapped with her father. But uh, it turns out that she was pulling some alien shit and she meant to get captured by her dad. So that was a ruse, what happened. So she had let him get her because she needed some information for him. She wanted to know more information about the other world and she knew that her father was looking into that. So all those conversations she's having with her dad where she was giving him little tidbits, like she knew he was gonna wanna know those things. And so it was very hard for her to wait to go to hunt. It's very difficult for her to do that because she, you know, wants to see him, but she stays there until she gets him to give some info. So he explains that he has a lot of books. He has a bigger library than Jessica had, but the biggest library is on a Valen, which is where the Stag King is. And that is who, so he is Rune's cousin, um, or uncle, Cormac, who died. Um, he... I believe it's Cormac. I'm so sorry if I was wrong about this, but Cormac, he died and he's the Stag King's son and that's where he's from. So that's a type of the Fae, right? Um, so where was I going with this? Oh, okay. So he has the books and info that they need, but they're super misogynistic there. Women aren't allowed in the cave of, in the palace of princes, and they're not supposed to be there if they're not being controlled by one of their, one of the men in their life, because they're that kind of assholes there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really tricky. Um, so she finds that out, and once she gets that info that that's where they need to go, she springs the trap on her father. So she actually knows how to get out of these bracelets, because Ruin had told her, like, his father used to put them on him so that he could punish him and he couldn't get away. And Rune has a key hidden in his bedroom and he had told her that and at a different time. So this whole time she could get away whenever she wanted to. So 
smarty. So she actually slaps the bracelets on him and then locks him in a closet in like the basement of his home. And he had, because he didn't want anyone to be like, for Bryce to be able to convince anyone to let her out, he'd sent most of his staff away. So he literally set up his own worst situation, which I just love a situation like that. So, so yeah, so now she's free and she's ready to teleport or winnow, whichever it is, right to hunt. So she's able to take herself there. So we have a little showdown with the Ocean Queen, who she's the one who has basically been harboring Orpheon. And we learn that the mayor actually, so like the Mer people, um, they actually have been in this world before any of the people were getting brought there. So they've seen the full range of what the Asteri have done. And they haven't really done anything about it at all. They've kept really quiet you know, they kept their attention away from them and the Steri haven't really messed with them. But the Ocean Queen, she has done, you know, she has protected um, people and people who are a part of Ophion and like need somewhere to go. You know, she's looked out for them, but she's pretty pissed because they've brought a bunch of fugitive with them. Therion, he has pissed off both the River Queen and the Viper Queen the Viper Queen put a hit out on him, so he's fucked, and he's not allowed to leave the ship. The Ocean Queen is like, you're not allowed to leave. Then the other big thing we find out. So Lydia wakes up, and she asks where they are, and he and Ruin, who of course hasn't left her bedside, is like, we're on the, uh, we're on the boat. We're on the ship. And so she jumps up and just runs somewhere, and we don't know where she's going, and it turns out that Lydia has twin sons that are 15 years old and she gave them to this family when she was kind of like pushed into it by the Ocean Queen, but also it would, you know, keep her kids safe. So she has twin sons and we find out about this and and I really liked her confrontation of Rune because obviously, I mean, Lydia has, Lydia is the reason they're alive. You know, she also blew her cover to get them out of there. You know, like Lydia has lost any like power that she had to help them. And you know, what thanks was she getting from it? So now Rune is like, do you want to tell me what it is? And she's like, no, I don't. Because now that I have a tragic backstory, now that I'm this mom who was taken away from her kids, now you have compassion for me? No. Like, I just, I don't want it. And I was like, that's right. Because I get Ruin was upset. Like, we, we know. But also, she always was on the side of good. At great risk to herself. Way longer than anyone else. So, like, she's been undercover for 15 year plus she's been undercover like this. And, you know, even Baxian, the, the hellhound, right? Even him, he hasn't, he's only been it for four years since he found his mate. So like, she's been undercover all this time and she just fucking gave it all up for Ruin and Hunt and Baxian. So for him to try to like give her the cold shoulder with that, it's just like, you are a child, Rune. Like you're acting like a child type of thing. So um, they're kind of having a little tiff right now. So anyway, Bryce shows up just in time for the, the, the ocean queen is like st stripping their hide. And it's just like, you guys are ruining, you know, what we've been working on. And Bryce really kind of calls her out. She shows up, pretends to be a princess. It's all great. And she's like, this is what I found out. We need to find a way to stop them. And the, the Ocean Queen is like, so if you're able to open a portal, like you should open it and take as many people with you as you can and leave, which that's just what Bryce found out that Celine and like Helen and them did. And she called them monsters for, for taking some people and not letting everyone go. And so she's like, no, we're not going to do that. And the Ocean Queen is like, there's just, there's no other way. Like we won't get away from them. You know, <laughs> that's, she's feeling very defeated with it. So she's offered her help, but she doesn't promise, you know, to go to war with them because they're limited. Like their power ends at the, at the oceans, 
at the ocean's edge. So anyway, very intense. So yeah, so Bryce shows up, um, they're convince her to she's going to bring them to a valen and drop them at the edge of the mists we find out that the mists are not able to like there's something more to them than just being like misty because the mists have protected like the prison and they've protected some other islands before too and honestly it reminds me too because i think in akatar isn't there the island hid by the mist that like the uh I cannot remember their names. I never remember them, but there was a pair of fae who'd been hiding there the whole time and like they come and help. Is it the, the, not the, is it the griffins or the, um, I can't remember what they are, but there was the type of, uh, fae that was there and I believe they were hidden by mist there too, I think. Um, but anyway, a valin is through the mist and so the Asteri can't, get in there unless they're invited um and the way that they're able to get there which i'll continue with this so they get basically kicked off the ship and therion is supposed to have to stay because he's forbidden from leaving the ship and he ends up as they're just about to go through the mist he jumps in the boat with everybody else and goes with because the ocean queen can't go in to can't go in so the way that they get through the mist is Bryce um, is able to use like her sword and the dagger and they like open a hole in the mist basically and Rune knew this because when he used to own the sword that's how he could get through it. So then they're confronted by the wonderful jackass that is uh, the stag king and he actually has, um, sorry I need to look at my little map, Flynn's sister um, is being held captive and kind of being going to be forced to marry someone because there isn't allowed to be any unwed females there and they're all just trying to be all pushy and everything. And so, um, she either has to marry one of them or get kicked back to Lunathian. Only in Lunathian, she would be hunted down by the Asteri because she's Flynn's sister. So she's in a tight spot. So Therian, he offers to marry her so that she isn't unwed. So they get married. We're hunting through the archives, trying to find out what we need to do, and we're trying to get it all done before the Stag King decides to betray us, basically, is what we're dealing with. But as I mentioned before, we now know that um, Ethan, Jessiba, and Hypaxia, I don't know if they will all go or like what will happen, but it appears that the body of the Firebird is in a Valen. So I wonder when that will get known by everyone. So that's where we're at now. This video is just me catching you up on what I'm reading. So what am I feeling right now? I'm feeling good, obviously, that Bryce is back with our peeps. Um, I'm also like, I'm just really nervous what this is building to. I'm really nervous to what this is building to. And I'm trying really, I'm not peeking ahead, but it's very difficult to do. Um, I think I've shared this. When I peeked, I wasn't peeking to see what was happening, but when I was reading House of Sky and Breath, I like peeked to see how many pages there were in the book and I saw <clears throat> the spoiler about Resand, you know? <clears throat> so I'm really trying not to peek and like see anything and know anything. But yeah, it's been pretty crazy. So yeah, I'm gonna finish my little snack, get back into it. And I mean, like I said, I still have seven hours left of it. So I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna keep reading until I'm done with it. But maybe I'll stop. Maybe I'll stop and save a little for tomorrow. I doubt it. I doubt it. But we'll see. So anyway, check back in with you in another couple hundred pages. We are now at the end of part two, which was the drop. And part three is the ascent. So what happened in this one, right? Okay. So the gist of this one is... Um, Bryce, Hunt, Therian, and um, Therian's new wife, which we won't get into that quite yet, but they're down in the caves trying to find stuff out. Um, needing, We're needing Bryce's light to keep the ghouls away and all the spooky stuff. And they end up finding a room just like the one in Prithian. And it has a sarcophagus in it. This time, though, the sarcophagus does not have an Asteri or Daglin inside, but it has 
stairs that lead down into another room that is filled with black salt. This black salt is the same kind of black salt that Bryce used when she summoned Adis. So this is a way to communicate with hell without summoning the demons where they're able to hurt you. And apparently, I think it was Helena. Yeah, I think, all right. I think it was Helena who created this so she'd be able to talk with them without uh, them having to be in contact. So Bryce and Quinn, um, they like, there's water that has the black salt in it. And so you drink it and then you go into a like, hey, like you go into a sleep where you can talk with them. So that's what they do. They go through and they end up getting to have a little chat with the princes of hell. So there is um, Adis. And Apollyon and Thanatos are there. Um, I think that's how you say his name. And they explain what is happening. So I don't want to go through like all of those little details because I wouldn't remember them anyway. But point being, they want to help. There are seven brothers of hell total and they do help in other worlds to help fight. So I really, really want to know if any of those brothers like is some people we've seen before in other worlds. I really want to know that. We'll delve into that more another time because they said they help out in different places. So the three of them want to help. Um, and I'm, I, I don't know, I'm a little nervous about them that it's going to be one of those things where it's like, because they say fully open the Northern Rift, which I'll explain that part of it. And then we'll have our armies to come help you fight because the powers that they have, they are able to harm the Asteri. Um, as well as once Bryce has full power, which again, I'll get back to that, she will as well. So they explain all the history. Like I said, we find out that Hunt was actually created by them. So were the Firebirds who have all been extinct because that lightning that keeps getting brought up is a type of like they want to be able to use that to fight the Asteri. It didn't ever quite work. It didn't ever quite work, but that's what they wanted to be able to happen. So Hunt was actually like made on purpose. It was a like researcher and his mother who paired together to like be the human vessel of him. So he's a little bit like a, <laughs> uh, you know, he was created for them, but they didn't make him be Bryce's mate is what they say. So I think that's just to leave a little bit of like they weren't forced to be together. But here's the thing, like faded mates, that's kind of what that is anyway, you know? But anyway, so I'm sure we'll have to deal more with how Hunt feels about that, that he was created for it. But he was created to be able to uh, to help Bryce. So he's around for that purpose. So it's great. So then they also explain to her that she needs to unite the three pieces of Helena's power, or Thea's, sorry. And Thea, who, you know, was the mother of Helena and uh, Celine, C Celine, and she had given each of her daughters a piece of her power, and she supposedly only kept enough power that she'd be able to fight back, but she didn't have enough to do that, so that's how she ended up dying. And so the, so that means Celine was left with a piece and Helena was left with a piece. And then Bryce was born with a piece. So that's what the starborn would mean is that in, you know, different generations and in different of the Fae, every so often there would be one, a person born who had this, but then would have to be born at the right time, right place to, you know, collect all the things. So very complicated with all that. But Bryce is the one born with the most power of it. So she has like a full of the third or whatever. Well, the, when she like collected power from Celine's like tomb there, when she was with Nesta and Cassie, and that was Celine's piece of the power. And now there is a final piece of power that Bryce needs to use both the dagger and the sword are like keys to this. So that means that only the person who united those could open it. And so she slams those in and like unlocks this. 
and she gets the last piece of power. And when she gets the last piece of power, it like frees the land that they're in from like all of the magic was being like sucked out of it to do this. So now she has all the magic. Um, all, I'm saying magic, but she has all the power. And she's now queen of a Valon and technically of the Autumn Court maybe because um, her father got free and um, Morvin, the Stag King, had reached out to him even though they're like enemies. But he was like, something's going on. Her father wouldn't have like let her you know, come here or whatever. So they're both waiting when Hunt and Bryce wake up and we have a big epic fight because a couple of their friends were being kept as collateral. But then we also have Rune and Lydia who have made up with each other. It's great. Who are trying to find them because they just like disappeared. And we have a big fight where both Morvan and the Autumn King get, get, oust it they get killed so they're both dead and now Avalon is actually like the safest place for people to be because the Asteri can't penetrate the mist but Bryce because she has the the star born power so is able to open it so at this same time where I just got to right now so Bryce is now the queen we need to figure out still how to um like, she needs to get there and open that gate so that hell can, you know, the princes of hell can come to help. Um, and Ethan, Hypaxia, and Jezeba are on their way still to this place. I think I said that in the last clip because they need to go get um, the bird to fix what was happening, right? So they're, like, just getting there as all this magic gets fixed. So they haven't run into the other people yet, but I'm sure that's just about what's to happen. So yeah, there's just so much is happening. And again, I know I'm doing the like really bad job of a recap with this, but I mean, literally people who do recaps of these make four hour long videos. So you're just getting the gen version and this is going to be long enough anyway. So I am at like page 560. I still have almost 300 pages to go. I still have five and a half hours of the audiobook left. So I don't know if I'll finish it tonight. I don't know. I might. I don't know. Mm. Right now, though, I'm going to do a little bit of cross-stitching while I listen because I did get tired of working on my sewing. I've been doing that literally for 10 hours today, um, working on that. So I'm going to do a little bit of cross-stitching while I listen to some more. But it is almost 8 o'clock and I might take a little break. I mean, plenty of my other friends, well, some of them will finish it in one day and my other friends will be taking a couple days to read it too. So, yeah. But anywho, I'll uh, chat with you later. All right? All right, yo. Still sitting in the same spot for this one because this is, this is it. Um, I am at page 686. I have 130. 40 pages left of it. We are starting to roll into the final conflict of this book. So, okay, a, another one. I'm just going to do quick updates of this. So, all right, we ended with you finding out that Bryce is the the queen now of Val Valhallen, Val Valhallen. Now I forgot what it is. Um, and I was wrong saying that Jessica went with Hypaxia and Ethan. I have to correct myself. It was just Hypaxia and Ethan. They end up getting there. They talk with Hunt and Bryce and, um, he sends some of his lightning with so that Hypaxia can try to fix Sigrid. But also Bryce gives Hypaxia a mission to try to come up with an antidote for the poisoning that's in the water, right? Because the um, one of the ways that they're able to get the magic from everybody um, is the Asteri have poisoned like all water. So Hypaxia figures out, and she does end up being successful at this, of making an antidote. Now, you if you take the antidote, it works until you consume water again. You know, like it's not, as we could say, it's not like it's a vaccine where now you are immune to it. But when you've taken it until you consume the poison again, like you'll be free of it. So she goes about, like she gets that as a job. Also, then Hunt and Bryce are now going to try to get to the Northern Rift. They leave behind um, Baxian to 
watch the the island basically and help the refugees as they show up because they're going to be ushering people to um ushering people to the island to be safe then also um what's their names um hold on that's it Therian and uh his wife Scythia I think is her name they are sent by Bryce to go talk to the river queen and like make up with her which the River Queen and the Ocean Queen, they're different, though. They're sisters. But the River Queen, she's the one who Therian was supposed to marry her daughter. And he had, like, messed around with her a little bit. So he's supposed to marry her. And he did. Like, that was the trouble he got into in the last book. And Bryce is like, she's the only one who offered to, you know, take in people when there was the attack at the end of um, uh, Earth and Blood. Like, nobody else would. So, which is very sad. Um, and so she's like, you need to find a way to get her to forgive you because she is an ally that we need. So that's the, their job. So they all head back to do that. Also, Ruin and Lydia go back because they're supposed to try to find Naomi and Isaiah, um, who are in Celestina's Asteri. Or, no, no, no. They're in Alestina's Triari, right? Because the Triari is the protection for the governor. But Celestina is someone who betrayed us in the last book, so we don't know if we can trust her with anything. So that's, like, everybody sent off on a mission at the beginning of this one. Um, Bryce meets up with her parents. And so Fury and June, Fury has a helicopter. She brings June and... Um, uh, her parents and Cooper and Sh Shearinx, they all come to the island. Um, she makes Fury and June stay behind to, like, help with everything. But she takes her parents with. So her parents and Hunt and her, they are going to the Northern Rift. So just you wait till we see what happens here. So, yeah. So that's where everybody gets sent. Um, Hunt and Bryce and the parents, they end up there. And Bryce is going to open the rift, but we hear that she's going to try to open it to somewhere other than hell first. So they're going to do something else first before um, they open it to Adis and like bring the princes of hell through. So she, a Hunt charges her up and she opens the rift to Nesta's living room. There we go. We weren't done with Prithian yet, okay? Because this is what we found out, right? We found out that the trove, you need a couple pieces of the trove together to be able to, um, like, open the rift. And also it will help her control the dead, right? The mask controls the dead. So Bryce has the audacity which I just love, and ask Nesta for the mask. And Nesta's like, ha, no, close this right now. And she's like, Rhysand's on his way. Like, close this right now. Or I'm just going to wait till he gets here and fuck you up. And Bryce is like, please, my world, we need it. And she's like, no. And also give back Azriel's dagger. And, you know, which we now know, like, there's Bryce's dagger, actually. Like, it's meant for her, which is kind of funny. So... She goes back and forth with Nesta, but what she ends up doing is she tells Nesta, she's like, I promise you, I will give you both the dagger and the mask back when we're done with it. And Nesta's like, why would I trust you? You just came here and fucked a bunch of shit up. Why would you? And she's like, because I'm going to give you collateral. And she offers her parents to Nesta. Now, her parents and Hunt can't understand her. I don't know why I did this. But Bryce still can from the things she ingested when she was there. So her parents have no idea. They don't know why they're there, which is so sad. But also, like, I understand why she did this. But mostly her parents would be upset because Cooper, their new adopted son, got left behind on the island, right? But they couldn't bring a kid with to this. So... He goes back and forth a bit with N and Nesta agrees. And Nesta agrees. So she gives her the mask. And then at the last second, honestly, too, like, Resand is, like, smashing into the window behind her. His darkness is. But her parents, they push, they literally push them into Prithian and close the gate. 
<laughs> so poor Randall and I can't remember her mom's name. Her poor parents. But also, what a nice vacation for them. That's going to be great. Like, man, I hope one of the extra scenes is with that. Like, I want it so bad. I have no idea. We'll see if they're success. Like, we'll see if we end this book with her parents still in Prithian. Like, that would be nuts. Can you imagine if the next Akatar book just has her parents in there? Well, we'll see where we get by the end of this. We'll see where we get by the end of this. Because I don't know that we're going to defeat everybody in this. I don't know. We have 140 pages and we have six Asteri to kill. Like, it's a lot. Okay, anyway, other stuff we have to get through. So, Ethan, he goes to tell the wolves what's going on. Because guess what? Hypaxia made the antidote, like I said. And when he takes it, his power amplifies by like 10 times. He's able to do stuff he never could do before as a wolf. So he goes to the wolves compound to, you know, try to talk to them about everything. But Sabine is there. And guess what? Secret and the, uh, I forgot his name, but the like the wizard guy or whatever who was holding Secret captive. So we have the Reaper Secret there. And Sabine just starts yapping all about what Ethan did. But then the Prime is there. And the Prime, come, like, Ethan came and, like, offered the sword. He had um, the Fendir sword. And he's like, I'm not here to get in the way. I just want you, I just want the wolves to be safe and everything. And so the Prime is like, I don't know why I've been too afraid to, like, turn my daughter away. But blah, blah, blah. He, like, goes through all of it. He offers the sword back to Ethan and names him as his heir and the future Prime. And then guess what? Sabine grabs the sword out of the Prime's hands and stabs it through his face. I just was not prepared. I'm not la like, I was shook. I was like, what? So, yeah. And then she's all like, I'm the next Prime. And she's like fighting with the sword. And because she just feels like that sword makes her alpha or whatever. And Ethan's like, no. No. We ain't doing this. And he bites the sword and shatters it, which is great. He turns into his wolf form, obviously, and he shatters it. And then we kill Sabine, and she's dead. And then the rest of the wolves honor him as Prime. Secret gets away. Oh, that's what I forgot to mention. Secret actually eats the Prime soul, so he doesn't even get to have a peaceful end. We eat the Prime soul, and then Sabine is dead, and the Prime is dead, and now Ethan is the Prime. So... I mean, that's good for us, I guess, because now we have that ally. So that happened. Then also, um, Therian was successful. The River Queen, after some back and forth, his wife helps out a lot. He is forgiven. And uh, she agrees. She says, anyone from any house who makes it to me, I will shelter them. And she's like, the mayor have been quiet for too long. We've kept it to ourselves. And I want to help however we can. So anyone you can get to me will take. And I was like, yes, River Queen. Yes, thank you. So we got that. Um, I'm sure there's still got to be a confrontation with the Viper Queen, though, because he pissed the Viper. She's the one who put the bounty on his head. The River Queen was just pissed. The Viper Queen put a bounty on his head. So we got to see what happens with that. So anyway, we got that. Then the final stuff to share. So Ruin and Lydia don't end up finding Naomi and uh, Isaiah. They can't find them. Um, and then after Ruin and Bryce have tossed her parents through the gate, they need to get ready to open the rift now again. And this time bring Adis through and all of his people. But the harpy shows up. So they were able to reanimate the harpy, but not with her soul or anything. So it's literally just one of the reapers, basically. And she's there. Um, and then following behind her, so they're able to kill the harpy. Like, she gets killed pretty easily. But Naomi, Isaiah, and Celestina show up there, which they were chasing after the harpy. So Celestina, which I'm really glad she got back on the right track. You know, she had betrayed them before, but, like, she got back on the right track here. Because after the attacks that happened, which I think I mentioned that, like the whole reason all this is, is there was a huge attacks by the stereo they attacked. They wiped out the resistance. Maybe I forgot to mention that. The resistance was like wiped out. Um, 
And that was the last straw for Celestina. Real nice that all those people had to get murdered for that to be her last straw. But what do you do? What do you do? But anyway, Hunt, he ends up just being so pissed off. Of, you know, all this anger. He's able to, like, like break the spell that is his slave crown and he breaks Isaiah's too and now they're just like totally powered up and he's just he's just ready to smite Celestina but Bryce talks him down and is like she made a mistake she was brainwashed and raised a certain way just like all the other archangels like just we need and we need her help we need her help so she agrees to go keep Ephraim busy which that's her fiance technically and now um they are able to bring Adis through. And again, I was feeling nervous because Celestine was like, no, no, you can't open it. And I was like, crap, what does she know? Because I've, I've mentioned, like, I was, I'm hella nervous about hell. Like, are they really on our side? Like, I'm, I don't know. I'm just scared. I'm scared that they're not. I want them to actually help. But I've just been burned before in Sarah J. Mass books where those that we think are our salvation are not. But, I don't know. I feel like they wouldn't hook her up with all that power if they were going to betray her. I don't know. Because she'd also be able to hurt them if they're... Because she wasn't able to hurt them in the dream world, but like she would if they're there. So, crossing my fingers? I don't know. I don't know. But Adis has come through as well as like all of his armies. So, there's a ton of them. And Bryce's plan is to use the mask to reanimate... A like all of the soldiers who died um, and and use them and their equipment to be able to take them on and Hunt is very nervous about that but she's like I will give each person like each like each soul the choice whether they want to be reanimated or not and that's her concession so again that's where we're at I'm now going to push through the rest of it but I needed to do another one because there had been a lot of stuff that happened obviously so yeah, I got 140 pages left to go. And again, I don't know if I'll finish them tonight. I'm getting pretty tired. It's after 10 now. But either way, there'll be another clip to wrap this all up. And we'll see what happens at the end. I'm so nervous. I'm literally so scared. I'm so scared. Because I feel like there's a potential for there to be a death. I also, like, just feel like there's potential for for bad stuff. I'm scared. So, anyway. Okay, I'm not done yet, but I'm literally shaking. I'm sorry, the phone, I'm trying to hold my wrist. <sighs> I have to do an instant reaction to this. Um, so Lydia gets the antidote, which unleashes her true power. She, <sighs> so she's a shifter. The, the hind is a like deer shifter. She's a deer shifter. I'm literally shaking. She's like the shifters from from Throne of Glass. <laughs> like I just her son, her twin sons are um, Brandon and Brandon and Oxian. I think I can't remember how to say his name, but she named one of her sons Brandon after the Brandon of the old, of oh, of old, which is from Throne of Glass. Like. I've been waiting for that connection because after the info that like people have come from more worlds than just the one, that means this is officially like it's a thing connected with Throne of Glass. I'm like shaking right now. I've been waiting for this connection to pop. <sighs> oh my gosh. Okay. I'm right in the heat of everything. I have an hour left of the audiobook, so I'll come with the end, but like I had to react to this like. She's also, it's official that she's Ruin's mate. So that makes sense that she's like from the Fae because we know they have mates. And he knew that they were mates. And he has just told her. And then she uses her full power to kill Pollux. Um, and that's, we're getting her POV now where she shares what she really is. So my brain is like melting right now. Like, oh my God. Okay, I'll be back for the end. Okay, hi, here we are. I am finished. I also just got my other copy in the mail, so let's see if it fits right there. Look at how sparkly it is. Okay, whoo. Wow, what, what else to say to wrap this up? I mean, I loved it. 
absolutely is a five star book. But let's let's finish my like reactions and walk through since that's what we've done for all of the rest of it. So that's how we'll end it. So I think the last thing that I was super pumped about is that we have confirmation that Lydia is from the line of Brandon. So that means that some of the people who ended up on Midgard were also from the same place that the Throne of Glass world takes place. I'm literally blanking on the name of that <laughs> land. So pardon me for keep saying the Throne of Glass world, but there is um, like confirmation that she's from those face. So we now have a connection to them as well, which is great. So, I mean, what goes down in this final battle here? I took some notes for it. So Hunt and Bryce, they are going to try to destroy the first light core. So her swords and Hunt's lightning is able to destroy the Asteri. Also, they can be harmed by the Princes of Hell, right? So the Princes of Hell, they're able to let them in. They were able to trick the Asteri, who think that they're so smart, and they thought they were going to be able to ambush the forces of Hell because they were, you know, they felt the rift open, and they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to stop them. But the thing is, and I remember having like a hint at this when she got the mask, because not only is the mask able to like help with what we're doing, but it can raise the dead, right? So they do this badass move I thought was amazing. And there are all of these like suits that, um, the, med the I want to say a med suit, but like these tech suits that are used, that the humans use to fight battles and stuff like that. They've been mentioned in other books before that one of Hunt's jobs was to take those apart um, in the war, you know, the humans fight against them and stuff like that. Um, and they go into the throne room, which in the throne room of the Asteri is where all of the wings of all of the fallen angels are, um, including a set of Isaiah and Hunt's wings, even though they're still alive. So in there, they go in and sure enough, the Asteri never sent those souls on. So there's a little piece of soul with every pair of wings. And so Bryce is able to awaken all of these wings and the souls of the angels, they take that and they are able to animate these machinery. And now they're like these robot bodies being led by the fallen against the Asteri. And it is just so good. I was like, oh, that's so great. And then of course, though, Isaiah and Hunt's wings, they don't have a soul with them because they're still alive. So he is able to burn those and not have them as an element anymore. So now their job is to blow up the, you know, like they could have stayed and, cause that's the thing is she would use Truth Teller and the Star Sword to stab in and <laughs> kill one of them. So I believe we do this with, um, who, who do we kill first? Is it Polaris? I think it's Polaris. I have all the, I have my huge notebook of everything right here. And the thing is, is it creates a black hole when she does that and it's going to start sucking stuff in. And that's one of the reasons why, um, they believe that like, I think it was Thea was afraid to do it, but now we have Hunt. And so when she stabs this and the um, Asteri is dying, he zaps it with his lightning and it causes the Asteri to just be pulled into the black hole on themselves and not take anyone else with them. So they would be able to stay there and kill them all. But here's the thing. They need to destroy the first light core because if any of the Asteri make it back, they can just keep filling themselves up with deuce, which would be awful. So we need to kill the first light or the core. Now the thing is, which we'll find out more, but the, the core of this, that's what runs this like world, basically. You know, they have electricity, right? They have phones, they have cars. It doesn't run on electricity. It runs on first light, right? The tide that they would take and then the second light, the souls of the dead. It wasn't just feeding the Asteri. It was also making this world run. So when they would destroy that, they are slowly going to lose all of that, which we'll talk about near the end of it anyway. So Anyway, so Bry Bryce and Hunt, they go to do that. Meanwhile, you know, I already said Lydia, we find out her reaction. And that's what I was going to share is like her sons have been taken captive. And I think I was kind of talking about that. And when she gets jacked up on her, like she gets the antidote, um, Ethan, is it Ethan or Theranos? Ther I think Thantos is the one who reaches her. Where did I write? Yeah, Therian. Sorry, Thantos. 
There is like a Thantos as well. I'm getting all the names. Right. Yeah, there is a Thanatos and a Therian. Thank you, Sarah Damas, for having all these names be so close to each other. Thanatos is one of the hell princes. So Therian, he was able to um, make it there and he gives um, one of the shots to, um, he gives one of the shots to Lydia and that's when we see that she has the starlight power, not a starlight, but like the fire power, um, you know, that's in like Brandon's line and stuff like that. And she's not just a deer shifter. Like this is what the shifters of old used to be like before they started to be like squeezed, you know, they, until they've been poisoned, squeezed. I don't know where that came from. So anyway, she, she singes Pollux in just a minute. He's gone. Um, so then she asks Ruin to get her boys out of there and she goes to join the fight. We see the sprites have arrived. They were able to find the queen and she has come to help. So they're like blowing stuff up everywhere with their power, which I was like, I love it so much. So the sprites are getting to help in this. So then we have our confrontation with, uh, Rigelis. So they get to where the core is at and Rigelis is there. And it's protected by this crystal, so they need to break into it and then be able to blow it up. Um, and it's difficult because they have to, like, Hunt has to keep hitting it with his lightning. They're trying to, like, drill a hole down into it. And they are getting, um, hold on, my sneeze. Achoo! Achoo! They're getting very tired because Rigelus is there to protect it. And so every time they stop to throw a bolt at it, he's on them. So they're just having to teleport everywhere and it's tiring Bryce out. So she's getting really weak. So she teleports them to the floor below or above, I think above, and Ethan finally gets to them. So Ethan has the God Killer um, gun and he has a bullet that was made from all of the second light of the, of the dead. Like all of the dead in the city put all of their power into this to basically make a bomb. So this isn't a bullet to kill one of the Asteri. It is to blow up that core is what it's for. Connor had given that to his brother. Can't remember if we talked about it before because we're so far in it, but that was something that happened. Um, Ethan was able to speak to his brother one more time. Um, and especially after we, because that's when we like killed the under king and Hypaxia becomes the ruler of that, blah, 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 all that. So... Ethan is able to give her this gun and Bryce leaves Hunt behind and goes back. Now, when she shows back up to shoot into this hole, now the four Asteri that are left are there. So the Kings of Hell were able to kill another one. So she had killed one, they had killed one. Now we have four left and they are now, they tell her that if she blows that up, it is a trigger point. If she blows that up, it will implode the whole world, right? Because they're getting sucked into these black holes. That's what's happening. And if Bryce blows that up, they have made that a trigger point so that it will take everyone with them if they do it. Now, Bryce decides to still do it. She takes the shot and this black hole opens. But I'm not 100% sure how this worked, but she's able to use some of her power to make the black hole like stay in one spot. So it, it does like suck her. All the Asteri and her into it as well as like the palace all collapses in but it doesn't uh, take anything else so it doesn't take the whole world with it but it does cause a lot of chaos so now Bryce is sucked in with them they are slowly one by one getting sucked far away and then Rigelis grabs on to her and doesn't let go so Bryce is floating off into space and she's gonna die and she's gonna close the she's going to close it up so that she was taken with them but they're still good right so hunt of course doesn't want this to happen so him and adis are kind of um standing on the edge of this crater looking in and adis is feeling you know he's like i wish we could do something but she sacrificed herself there isn't anything that we can do and then one of the med suit i'm sorry i call it a med, the tech suits walk like walks itself over and opens up so that hunt can get into it and it's the soul of Shahar and a bunch of the other fallen who are powering this suit. So he is able to dive in and propel himself because there's no air. She literally is in space. So his suit is able to push him to her and he gets a hold of her. But now he's kind of like stuck there and it's closing. And we see this beautiful scene of all of their friends stand at the edge of the hole and hunt 
throw some of his lightning back to, I think it's Thanatos, or I think it's Thanatos who, that's where he gets his lightning power from. And so Thanatos grabs onto his lightning and then Adis helps hold the hole open. And we have Lydia's there trying to have, like all of them are lined up there holding this hole open so they can get back through. So they pull themselves through, uh, or they pull Hunt and Bryce through, but Bryce is dead. She's not breathing. <sighs> Which I know we're all like scared in the moment, but there's no way in hell that we're going to lose Bryce. But it is very powerful how we get her back is what I think was really beautiful. And in like, I want to say, honestly, like in so many fantasies, we have this moment and I think some people get tired of it, but I always love the moment when the hero gives all, and then there's people there to give all to the hero to help them. Like, I really love that. So I know that like, yes, that's happened in Akatar. Yes, it happened in Throne of Glass and now it's happening for Bryce too. So what happens is that Jessica steps up because Hypaxia is like, maybe I can help. And we're like, whoa, we're not going to turn Bryce into a reaper. You know, Hunt is like, she would never forgive me. And Hypaxia is like, I actually have, a, we have a trade to make. So Jessaba steps up and Jessaba offers her life in exchange, her, the immortal life that Apollo, I think it's Apollyon. Now I can't remember who, but I think it was Apollyon who had cursed her with the long life and she's going to trade it for Bryce. And um, so she tells Hypaxia to make the trade and Jessica says, she's like, I've lived 15,000 years. I don't need to still be here. And this is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for Bryce because I know that, you know, she sacrificed for all. So Jessica then is in the same place as Bryce and Bryce sees the happy land. Like, we'll just start, like, let's just say like she sees heaven out that way. But she hasn't walked to it yet because she says she's looking for something. She doesn't know what it is, but she she's not ready to go, which it's her pull to her mate. So it's hard for her to go. So Jessica is there and Jessica tells her um, she's like Midgard, this the world itself is off is allowing this to happen because it knows what you offered to save it. She's like, that's the innate magic that every like world has that's hidden within it. And so it's letting me offer this trade for you, blah, 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 magic reasons, right? And so she also says, all of the books of Parthoth are now yours. They won't have to be hidden anymore because the Asteri are gone. So get that knowledge out to everyone. The library can be, you know, spread about the world. And also her collection of all of the antiquities she saved is hers. So I'd be very interested, you know, when we come back to Crescent City or whatever, what might be in this collection, because we still haven't even gotten through, you know, all of it. But there's got to be some stuff from other worlds now, now that we literally know that there is people, fr there's from all of these worlds, right? So anyway, so we get her back. And before she walks through <laughs> the pack of devils, so Connor and Danica and Lahaba are standing at, um, they're standing in that that heaven place, right? And they uh, all wave to her as she goes back. So that was really good because at least for now, this arc of what Danica was trying to do is done. Um, I know there will be more stuff with Crescent City. There'll be more Akatar things, but this arc that was started with the death of Danica and the pack of devils, like their deaths have been answered for. And I thought that was, that was very powerful. It was very beautiful. Okay, so now in our wrap-up stuff, I'll get through this because I know this vlog is so long, but if you watched all the way here, it's because you care to see it. So um, we don't have anything super bad that, like this one ended very peacefully in my opinion, which was wonderful. I loved that. Um, it very much had that ending that like Wings and Ruin has, you know, where there's no like big cliffhanger at the end of it. So this very much does feel like the end of an arc for it. But there are some seeds of stuff. So here we go. Um, but yes, yeah, so they explain that without the first light powering it, the grid's going to start to go down. So we already get a hint that like the Viper Queen, she's making her goons like store up barrels of this stuff. They're going to be fighting over it. Um, their world might go back to a version more like, like the Akatar or Throne of Glass world where there's no power anymore because you know, they'll have to find another way to come up with it. However, the Ocean Queen, she powers all of her stuff without first light. So maybe there's a way to do that. So that's kind of percolating. Bryce ends the monarchy within the Fae. She closes that down. They're not super happy about that, but that's how it is. And then 
we have Bryce going to get her parents and this was probably like the scene that choked me up the most because she opens the rift again and her and Hunt go in to get Ember and Randall and um, Nesta and Cassian are in there and Ember and Randall have really like bonded with them because of course they have especially Nesta and Ember and this was where I was just like a mess when I was reading this um, because Nesta never got to have a good mom and so Ember being the compassionate loving woman she is like she gives Nesta a hug and she kisses her cheek and she says like you're such a good woman and like um I can't remember all the words but she's just so like loving to her and we find out that Resand and Randall had bonded over being protective dads um which is just so cute so yeah, Ember has this really beautiful goodbye and Ember's like, you should be lucky to have a mom like this. And Bryce is like, I know that I'm lucky. She's really wonderful, even if she can't keep her mouth shut sometimes. And then Bryce does something. Of course, she gives back the mask and she gives back Azrael's dagger, right? Truth teller. But then she also gives over the star sword to Nesta. And she tells her, she says, you also have an eight-pointed star tattooed on you. And you should find out what this means. Because it meant something for me. So what does it mean for you? Um, and so that, I think, is our big lead into what's next. Is now, Nesta has those three things of power that Bryce had had, right? Nesta now has both of the blades and she has the mask back. So they don't have the horn, though, which is like what opens the world. So... Um, usually the mask and the horn, it said, like, work together. So I don't know what, like, that will mean to not have that. But anyway, so you got it all back plus the star sword, which is very interesting. Because that always did belong to, like, the Fae anyways, the ones who held a hold of it. So then we end this. Like I said, the Fae nobles are ended. Lydia and Rune are mates, and they have a place to stay together. She has a good relationship with her sons now. She'll hopefully get to see them more. She was released from her duty to the uh, Ocean Queen. And then um, Bryce and Hunt, they are, you know, they need to get a Senate and a, like, democracy going in the place. And she is now taking over um, the gallery from, you know, Jessaba. And then they get a call from... Baxian, who Baxian is back on a Valen, and all of a sudden, all of these Pegasuses have arisen. So, obviously, they were being hidden somewhere, and they don't know. So, there's just, like, all these Pegasuses that have arrived, and he's like, please come help me. I can't control them. I don't know what to do. They're just eating all the crops and, like, ruining everything. So, the book actually ends on kind of this funny moment where um, Hunt, or Bryce is like, do you want to come with me? And he's like, to see Jelly Jubilee in the flesh? Of course. So they're on their way to deal with the Pegasus. So that is the end of the book. Now that I have done a full recap as I read this, let me tell you, I loved this book. Of course I did. I have never rated a Sarah J. Mass book below a five star, like in all of my stuff. I just, I loved it. I thought there was so much we got answers to. There's still a lot we don't have answers to, but there were so many pieces that clicked into place with this. And I love that stuff. I love it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm not the best at always picking out puzzle pieces. It's why when we did the reread of her books, I really lent, le leaned on my friends to show me some things. But in this one, there was some really beautiful beautiful connections to find. The standout characters to me, um, I really, really, really loved Lydia in this. I just did. I love a redemption arc. I love a woman who'll do whatever she has to. And the way that she was willing to take the scorn and the shame of being the hind and, and, you know, doing this work she did, I just thought she was amazing. I loved Rune as well. And I mean, of course, I love Bryce and Hunt. I love how their relationship has evolved a little bit. Um, the spice white, let's say that there was only, um, three like steamy scenes in here, plus some like sexy stuff. Not that people totally care, but I'll just tell you in case there's like two with Bryce and Hunt, which one of their sex scenes was actually like important because they can pass their power to each other, like through intimacy. So there you do it with a kiss, but they also do it when they have sex. They like pass their energy back and forth, which at one point allows Bright or allows Hunt to give Bryce some power when she needs it. So that was a cool note. But there's two sex scenes with them and then there is like an almost sex scene and then a full sex scene with Lydia and Rune. So not much time for a lot of spice in this, of course. And honestly, it's not that I missed it because we had so much going on. But yeah, we have Ethan, who's now the prime. We have, you know, 
all that stuff going. Isaiah is going to lead the angels. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this. This was a reaction to it. I still need to process everything, but you guys got my reactions just as it's coming in. So let me know what you thought about it. The comments will be a spoiler zone. So feel free to comment on stuff and um, share with me what you loved. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this. I know it was chaotic and super long. So if you made it all the way to the end, give me some stars down below for our starborn girl. Um, what's going to be next? I haven't watched any interviews or any behind the scenes stuff for Sarah yet because it, it gets me too excited and stressed out to look into it beforehand. So now I'm going to go see, I know she was giving some hints at what's coming next. I'm pretty positive it will be an Akatar book next. It just has to be for how she did. It's got to be. Um, and because this arc has kind of ended for now, I don't see us getting the CC book right away. I don't see that, but we'll see we'll see. So thank you so much for watching, friends. Like I said, give me some stars down below if you like it. If you're just finding this and watching it because it's Sarah J Mass content, hi, I'm a romance booktuber <laughs> and I have um, videos that are recommendations for all different kinds of tropes and all of that good stuff. So definitely check me out. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and we'll see you next time.